Hi everyone, this is Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I decided to do a video using the Arteza Real Brush Markers. Uh, let me start out by saying that I am not a watercolorist. It is definitely something that I have always struggled with. Um, in my previous or in a past video, I had mentioned while I was answering the 20 crafty questions that if I could learn one art, it would be to watercolor but I tend not to have the patience to wait for things to dry. Well, with these particular real brush pens, I have found that they're really, really easy to use. Um, I watched a bazillion videos before I purchased them. And so yes, I purchased them. This is not sponsored by Arteza. They did not send them to me. I bought them with my own money. Um, and I'm not even gonna call this video a review of them. I just wanted to share my experiences and and hopefully if you struggle with watercolor and you're thinking about purchasing them, maybe watching this video will help you make an even more informed decision. So the stamp set that I'm using is the Spring Peony set from Honeybee Stamps. And I had actually stamped and colored a bunch of them off screen but I thought that I could color up a few more just so you could see how I did it. And I started out by stamping the images in Versamark ink onto a piece of Canson watercolor cardstock. And then I heat embossed them with white embossing powder. Now on a side note, on a lot of the videos that I had watched, um, a lot of people said that they preferred to use Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I played around with them on Bristol Smooth cardstock. And for me, I prefer the Canson watercolor cardstock. And I would have to say that the main reason for that is I always use too much water. It is something that I know I'm aware of, but for whatever reason, I can't bring myself back from using a whole bunch of water. With the Arteza, with the Arteza Real Brush pens, you do receive a water brush with the set. And I purchased the set of 48 colors. And I am not good with water brush. Again, I tend to squeeze it and I end up with water everywhere. So I am using a paintbrush and just clean water to help blend out the colors. So when I was playing with these, I have found that for me, the easiest way is to start with my darkest color and the colors that I've used, they'll pop up in the top left hand corner for you. Um, anyway, I have found the easiest way for me to use these is to start with my darker color and put that down just kind of a thin line. It kind of depended on the, how large the area was that I was coloring at the time and then go in with my second color. In this case, it was sunset yellow. And then I would bring in a paintbrush with water on it. I would add the water above where I laid down the pigment and bring the water down into the pigment and then kind of push the pigment around with the brush so it would kind of, so I could get it to go where I wanted it to go. And I was kind of skipping around on the petals, but because I embossed the images, that really wasn't necessary. So I don't know why I did that. But anyway, as I mentioned, I'm not a watercolorist. I I'm just not. Normally when I do watercoloring, I'll use distress inks. Um, and I, I do okay with them, but because I use so much water, a lot of times my colors end up being a lot lighter than I wanted to, wanted them to be. And with distress inks, because they're reactive with water, if I try and add more color in, I tend not to be able to get a darker color again, because I use entirely too much water. But I did notice with these, if the pigment was dry or pretty much dry, and I thought that an area was a little bit too light, I was able to go in and add more pigment and then blend it out again with, with more water. So that was really helpful for me, being that I'm so very challenged with using any type of watercolor medium. I really have enjoyed using the real brush pens from Arteza. I'm really pleased with how easily they blend and how easy they are to use. And I'll say it, you know, 4,000 more times in this video, I struggle with watercolor, I always have. 
but these really do make it so much easier. And I do think that a part of it is that you kind of have to just play with them and figure out what works best for you. I found in watching a variety of videos, um, not only from stampers and card makers, but from other other types of artists as well regarding the Arteza Real brush markers. I learned a lot in watching a variety of videos. Um, the Canson watercolor paper works really well for me. I would like to try the Arteza watercolor pads that they have, and I know that they have a couple of different kinds. So maybe one of these days I'll purchase one of their watercolor paper pads and try that out and see how I like them as well. And I do, again, I do think that it's just a matter of playing with them and finding out what is going to work best for you. Um, normally I do like to emboss images because the embossing powder creates little wells and it helps me stay within the lines. You'll see in a little bit here that I had decided that I wanted to add two little spriggy thingies, um, but because the stems on the spriggy thingies are really fine that I ended up not embossing them. I just stamped them straight with ink and I just really took my time to make sure that I didn't get too far outside of the stamped image while I was coloring in those buds. Um, but I also noticed because there were a few spots on some of the flowers that I did end up going like way out, but I was able to add water and kind of soak up most of the color with just a dry paper towel. Um, another perk that I really liked about these. I'm only showing how I colored two flowers in the set of leaves and then the little buds. Um, the two flowers that I'm showing, I chose them because one of them is more closed and the other is a lot more open. So I just wanted you to be able to see the difference in how I chose where to put the colors as I did. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and just speed up the coloring a bit and play some music for you while I finish up the coloring. And then I'll be back to put the card together because I actually started to put the card together and then I ended up tearing it all apart and ended up redoing the card. So a lot of that I did cut out of the video because you just didn't need to see me argue and struggle with that. So here is some music for you to enjoy and I will be back shortly.
was done with all of the coloring and everything was completely dry, I ran the images through my die cut machine with the coordinating dies. And that background piece of paper there, or the background piece of cardstock there, you can totally ignore because I end up not using it. I played with the placement of all of the elements for the card and then put a piece of press and seal over the top so that they would stay in place. Removed the cardstock from the back side of it and then just used liquid glue to glue all of those tiny little pieces together. And I had initially put a whole bunch of foam tape on the back side of that because I was going to use that stenciled piece of cardstock and decided that I really didn't like how it was turning out. So I tore off all of the foam tape and decided to try and create a watercolor background instead. So this here is another piece of Canson watercolor cardstock and I wet it down with a paintbrush first, added a little bit of color and then blended that out. Then I heat set it and went in with the periwinkle so that it would be a little bit darker. And I was really liking how the background was coming out. And again, for the 4,000th time, I'm not a watercolorist, but I really liked how this background turned out. And once it dried up a little bit, I did hit it with my heat tool one more time. I decided to add some splatters and see how these real brush pens do with that. And as you can see, they splatter quite nicely. I just applied the pigment directly to my craft mat and got a very wet paintbrush. And for the splatters, I used a bigger paintbrush and just hit it on the back of my hand and the splatters went everywhere. And once I was happy with those splatters, I thought I might as well add a little bit of sparkle. So I brought in Perfect Pearls and mixed that in, splattered those over, and then heat set it. I did end up cutting the watercolor background down with a stitched rectangle die and adhered that to a darker piece of purple cardstock. And then used liquid glue to adhere my flower bunch to the front of that. And after I placed that on the watercolor panel, I realized that there were a few things that were still kind of bothering me. Because I adhered it to the stenciled panel and there were a bunch of pieces that were hanging off the edge, I did use my scissors to trim those off. So when I placed it on the watercolor panel, I kind of had to line those up. And the top leaf there looked funny because it was kind of half cut, so I just lobbed off the rest of that there. I almost forgot to adhere the second bunch of purple buds and because I had pressed pretty well on the leaves on the right, I kind of had to wiggle and jiggle, but eventually I was able to sneak that in and press it down really well. And then the stem on the biggest peony was kind of making me crazy because it was just kind of floating in the air. So I just grabbed my scissors and snipped that off as well applied liquid glue to the back of that and then adhered that to the front of a top folding A2 size note card. And I did put an acrylic block over the top of it just so the glue had a chance to dry. And that finishes up my card for today. Thank you again so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.